Ambulance operators say the country's emergency system is being pushed to the brink. To talk more about this, we're joined now by Dr. Ed Rock, Chief Medical Officer at Global Medical Response. That is a medical transportation company. So, Doctor, I'm hoping you can kind of enlighten us about the situation on the ground for those ambulance operators. Um, and, and how is the pandemic worsening the situation, which some folks were saying was already uh, pretty bad and pretty dire before? Yeah, you're, you're spot on. And, you know, this, the COVID pandemic has become the perfect storm for emergency medical services. So in communities, the public relies on EMS. There's not, there are very few places in the United States where you can't dial 911 and have someone who's trained and uh, very capable that comes to your problem in under 10 minutes. So we've, we've relied on that. Uh, to manage emergencies, to manage uncertainties, and then the pandemic hits. And this perfect storm of um, a highly contagious infectious disease, as we're learning about it um, while we're managing it, with the increased costs of personal protective equipment, frankly, early on, the challenges of making sure we had appropriate personal protective equipment, the training and education of our frontline caregivers, the operational changes, the either decrease in ambulance volume in some communities, which impacted revenue, or the dramatic increase, all of those variables create significant challenge for sustainability for EMS systems to continue to operate. You know, the, the EMS professional, probably one of the best professionals on the planet, they wanna get out and help, they wanna make a difference, and now we're going into almost a year of a very challenging environment. So we're worried. And EMS um, infrequently is as worried as we are today about being able to sustain that as the pandemic continues. So, Doctor, I'm reading that some, you know, ambulance companies, emergency medical services companies are actually going out of business during this pandemic. Uh, why is that? Because you would think that an increase in ambulance calls would actually make some of these companies more profitable. Why is that not the case here? Yeah, it's a, it is a fascinating paradox. So one of the challenges with reimbursement in emergency medical services, and, and not a lot of folks know this, is that the reimbursement occurs when the patient is transported to the hospital. So those calls that result in a response of the EMS entity, the ambulance, where the patient is evaluated and not transported to a hospital are not reimbursed. So as, as you know, during COVID, the healthcare system, very appropriately, by the way, um, really worked to try and minimize the number of patients who were transported to overcrowded hospitals that had saturated ICUs. So what happens with an increased number of no transports Revenues decline substantially, so the patient gets managed, but the EMS system, the ambulance, does not get reimbursed for that. The equivalent would be, imagine going to a physician's office, and the physician really only gets reimbursed if the patient's admitted to the hospital. So the incentives there are to move the patient to the hospital. The challenge is that in, in, in an era of COVID, um, we really try and keep as many of those patients outside of the hospital as we can. Can All I right. add one other Unfortunately, thing? we don't have um, any more time here, doctor. And I know that what you're highlighting here really kind of underscores some of the needs for more stimulus funds. I know that ambulance services do not receive uh, as, as large a portion of some of those funds as many would think, but we're going to have to leave that there. Dr. Ed Rock, Chief Medical Officer at Global Medical Response, would love to talk with you again. Thanks so much for joining us today. Happy to do it. Thanks.